Test one, two, test one, two, testing, testing, one, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, test, test. Okay, good morning again, uh, or good afternoon. I apologize. Uh, my name is uh, Councilmember Antonio Reynoso, or Antonio Reynoso, the council member. I'm the chair of the Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste. And I just want to recognize the council members that are currently present before I go on. Uh, council Member Cabrera, Council Member uh, Cohen, Council Member Constantinides, Council Member Valone, Council Member Brannon, uh, Council Member Drum, and Council Member Yeager. Thank you all for being here. Um, welcome to this oversight hearing about the Department of Sanitation's 2019-2020 draft snow plans. Local Law 28 of 2011 requires DSNY to submit to the council a snow plowing and removal plan for each borough and to make those plans available to the public on the city-wise, city's website. This hearing will examine the draft snow plans that the council received from DSNY's pursuant to Local Law 28 and the city's readiness for the upcoming snow season. We also look forward to, the hearing, to hearing from DSNY's lessons learned from the management of the last November 15th six inch snowfall known as Winter Storm Avery. Despite its relatively small amount of snow, this storm significantly impacted the lives of New Yorkers. Many were stuck in traffic for many hours and some children were stuck on school buses for more than 10 hours without updates to their parents about their whereabouts or their safety. New Yorkers should not have to go through this again and I hope to understand from DSNY what adjustments have been made to respond to future storms of this nature even though we had a hearing on it, uh, but we can do it again. We're also hearing today intro number two, uh, 1228, or sponsored by Council Member uh, Danny Drum, uh, which would create an affirmative defense for certain sanitation violations uh, during declared emergencies and certain severe weather conditions. I'm looking forward to the hearing um, and hearing from DSNY uh, their thoughts on this bill. Uh, <coughs> And before we get to you, Commissioner, I want to give uh, Council Member Danny Drum an opportunity to make an opening statement. Thank you very much, Chair Reynoso, for hearing intro 228 today. This legislation addresses an ongoing injustice by reforming how the Department of Sanitation issues violations in the aftermath of natural and man-made disasters. No one should be penalized by the city for following the city's own instructions. Yet that is exactly what is happening when the Department of Sanitation issues violations during declared emergencies. During one period of extreme cold, the mayor told older New Yorkers that they should stay inside. One of my constituents, an 86-year-old woman living alone, took heed of this directive. To her chagrin, she subsequently received a notice of violation for garbage on her sidewalk during the emergency. Senior citizens and the disabled are especially vulnerable to this treacherous practice and that is why it has to end as soon as possible. I believe Local Law 59 of 2016 provides a solution. In the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy, the Council passed this legislation which ended the enforcement of such violations. However, the Department of Sanitation insists on, wrongful, on wrongfully interpreting Local Law 59 to limit its applicable, applicable, applicability to Hurricane Sandy related issues. Intro 228 will rectify this problem by making it crystal clear that a declared emergency or other related event is a defense to an improperly issued violation. In the end, I hope the department will reassess its practices and stop preying on people during these crises. New York City should not be putting an undue burden on its residents, especially the most vulnerable members of our communities. Doing so does nothing to advance the goal of encouraging compliance. It only makes our city agencies look like fine collecting machines. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilmember Drum. And uh, we've been joined by Edward Grayson, uh, First Deputy Commissioner Stephen Costas. Thank you for your time as interim uh, commissioner of the Department of Sanitation. Really appreciate um, all of our time together and the work that you did um, covering for Commissioner uh, the Catherine Garcia. Take it away. Okay. And I just want to, yes, I want to acknowledge that we've been joined by Councilmember Chin. I want to swear you in, Commissioner. Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth today, and to answer Councilmember questions honestly? I do. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair Renoso and members of the Committee of Sanitation and Solid Waste. I am Catherine Garcia, Commissioner for the New York City Department of Sanitation. 
with me here today, as you said, is first Deputy Commissioner Stephen Costas and Edward Grayson, Director of the Bureau of Cleaning and Collection. I would like to thank Chair Reynoso and the members of the committee for holding this hearing to discuss with you the Department's draft snow plans and our preparedness going into the upcoming 2019-2020 snow season. In accordance with Local Law 28 of 2011, our draft snow plans detail the Department's snow fighting procedures from planning and preparedness to implementation. The plans identify how we will allocate personnel and equipment resources in each borough and district, the coordination of services among agencies and customer service protocols. We will consider all comments and recommendations received by elected officials on our draft plans and then we will publish the final borough snow plans on the department's website by November 15th. While the department's workforce and its equipment and vehicles appear most visible in the public eye in the wintertime, the department's preparation and planning process for each year's snow season is actually continuous throughout the year. For example, the department made operational and changes and adjustments for the 2018-2019 snow season after winter storm Avery last November. Additionally, following each winter snow season, the department performs a review and assessments of its response to all storms during the previous season. As part of our annual review, staff review over 1,400 snow routes in all five boroughs and revise them as necessary based on the prior year's experiences and to adjust to any changes such as construction of a new school or changes to traffic patterns. The department performs preventative maintenance on all snow related equipment and upgrades equipment as necessary. The department also ensures it has adequate equipment, parts and supplies to carry out our snow plans including salt and calcium chloride snow chains and this year brine. The department holds winter operations training for sanitation workers from September through December each year. You may have seen them on Sundays. Training includes spreader operation, attachment of plows and chains, use of two-way radios, and the use of the Magellan turn-by-turn -turn navigation. We also conduct a full-scale snow drill once the night plow season begins to get everyone in quote-unquote snow mode. This important exercise involves all department divisions, including both operational and administrative functions. During night plow operations, the department increases staffing on night shifts to ensure sufficient coverage for snow or winter weather. This year, this, the night plow season will begin on October 28th, yes, on Monday, and end the first Monday in April. The movement of night plow season is a direct result of our evaluation following winter storm Avery. Additionally, while the department has historically used salt in combination with calcium chloride to treat roadways ahead of snowstorms, one of the recommendations that came from the aftermath of winter storm Avery was to use other means to inhibit the accumulation of snow and ice on roadways. Last year, we piloted the use of salt brine in liquid form and for the 2019-2020 season, we are expanding this program to all five boroughs. The sodium brine solution will be used as an anti-icing measure to further help prevent dangerous road conditions in conjunction with rock salt. Throughout the duration of a storm, department field managers constantly monitor roadway conditions, equipment use, and variations in weather patterns. Our field officers report this information on an hourly basis in their respective borough commands, which is then relayed to our operations headquarters. Salt spreading operations continue for the duration of the snowfall. Once the snow accumulation becomes greater than two inches, the department deploys its snow plows. Plowing operations continue until all of the city's traffic lanes are passable. Following the completion of all roadways, we begin clearing bike lanes, bus stops, crosswalks, and other pedestrian infrastructure. In recent years, the department has acquired snow equipment, more snow equipment to more effectively move snow from narrow streets, ramps, and elevated roadways. Thanks to these investments, the department now has a total of 705 large and small salt spreaders, 20 anti-icing vehicles which will be used to spread brine before a storm, 302 front-end loaders, 569 SUVs for field officer supervision, and 36 snow melters. 
This fleet not only makes us better prepared to respond more effectively to large storms, but also improves our ability to respond to ice storms and other types of frozen precipitation where plows alone are ineffective. The department's snow budget for fiscal year 2020 is $111 million. The department has adequate staffing with more than the 6,400 sanitation workers available to manage this winter's snow and ice storms. We also have available approximately 300,000 tons of rock salt stored at over 42 locations <coughs> citywide with contracts in place to deliver an additional 600,000 tons as necessary. The department also has approximately 65,000 gallons of brine stored at seven locations citywide. The department makes every effort to clear snow and ice from city's highway streets and bicycle lanes as expeditiously as possible, but this can be an extended process when persistent or heavy snowfall occurs combined with falling temperatures and high winds. Because every storm brings different challenges which impact the speed with which streets are cleared, including storm intensity, temperature, time of day, and accumulation, we ask the public to be patient and allow department workers who are performing under tough and often brutal conditions to safely complete their tasks timely and effectively. I will now turn my focus to intro number 1228. As proposed, this bill would expand the circumstances in which an affirmative defense for one, two, or three family residential buildings to a violation pursuant to section 16-182 of the administrative code would be allowed before the Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings. As a result of this bill, owners who are found to have a dirty sidewalk or failed to clean 18 inches into the street would be allowed to assert a defense when the mayor had proclaimed a local state of emergency, the mayor had publicly urged residents to remain indoors due to extreme hot or cold temperatures, the Department of Emergency Management had issued a cold weather alert, or the National Weather Service had issued a winter weather advisory, or any date during which the average daytime temperature was less than 25 degrees Fahrenheit and the covered person is either more than 65 years of age or an individual with a disability. While the department understands the intent behind this legislation, the department cannot support any legislation that impacts the cleanliness of our sidewalks and streets. Currently, property owners can be issued violations for a dirty sidewalk or for failure to clean 18 inches into the street during residential routing hours, which are from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. and from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. daily. The department believes that cleanliness of the sidewalks and streets is a huge quality of life issue, and we rely on property owners to do their part in helping to keep the city clean. For these reasons, the department opposes intro number 1228. In closing, I want everyone to be assured that snow fighting is a core component of the department's mission, and our workforce understands that their performance is critical to keeping the city functioning 24 by 7. As we approach the official start of the 2019-2020 snow season, I am confident that the city's workforce can and will respond quickly and effectively to any major snow event. I look forward to your input and suggested comments on our draft snow plans. My staff and I are now happy to answer your questions. Thank you for your testimony, Commissioner. I'm going to hold out on the questions related to intro number 1228 to allow for uh, the sponsor of the bill to, to ask those questions. Um, I'll, be, I'll be quick and brief also to allow for the rest of my uh, colleagues to be able to ask questions in a, in a timely fashion. Um, after the winter storm Avery, uh, last November 15th, there was a recommendations uh, that were proposed um, after an audit. Mm -hmm. And the recommendations, I have five here that I wanted to know whether or not uh, the City of New York or DSNY is implementing those, those recommendations or whether they made sense. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say them all um, so that we don't go one at a time. Uh, DSNY should adopt a more conservative approach to staffing to account for low likelihood outside chance forecasts. Mm -hmm. um, DSNY should develop specific action plans to get equipment off of highways before they get jammed up. DSNY should deploy staff to the Joint Transportation Management Center, or the JTMC, during a weather event for improved situational awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, DSNY should improve messaging ahead of storm and increase rapid response messaging if street cleaning efforts are challenged in any way. And last, uh, DSNY should increase pre-treatment of roadways, either through pre the pre-application of salt or by investing in dedicated brine applicator trucks or spray a salt solution to pre-treat critical areas 
up to two days before snow is supposed to fall. Um, so those are the five that I have. I just wanted to know how you uh, responded yeah. to that and whether what we're hearing today is going to be an improvement on these issues. Right. So that we, we absolutely took each of those uh, into consideration as we did our snow plans for this year. Uh, I think even last year we took a more conservative approach in terms of uh, pre-salting streets and getting messaging out there. In many cases, I think those events ended up staying more of a, m a rainy mix than going full snow, but because of the chance that the freeze line was could move. Um, so we intend to be conservative again this snow season. Um, we absolutely think that we need to try brining the streets ahead of time. So we did get 20 de-icing pieces of equipment and th you're gonna see those out when the sun is shining um, well before storms so that we can try and get to particularly um, on off ramps of highways that tend to freeze before other parts of, of infrastructure and high spots. Um, we do have uh, action plans in place with PD. We actually bought 10 spreaders that are specifically dedicated to be um, escorted by NYPD uh, during storms to make sure that uh, rather than trying to meet up with them, we're just gonna pair them before a storm and have them escorted for the entire time. Um, and we will have staff at uh, the Joint Traffic Management. This is in addition to the staff that we already put at PD to watch the camera system. Uh, so we hope that this will make it so that we can be ahead of any issues that are happening when we have uh, some sort of cascading series of <coughs> events that can hamper our ability to clear snow. Um, the, assisted, the assisted vehicles by NYPD I think is a great idea. I want to be clear that uh, our goal here is not necessarily to get traffic flow moving so folks can get home in a timely fashion. Is emergency vehicles and other things that are happening during a time uh, like a winter storm. Mm -hmm. uh, we just need to make sure we have access to our ambulances and our police vehicles um, and traffic that is stuck, that is not moving, is detrimental to that, um, and to that response time. So I just want to make sure that people know when there is a winter storm, the best thing to do is stay at home, leave your car where it is, maybe take public transportation. Um, and allow for uh, DSNY and others to do their job. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm excited to this assisted, this assisted uh, vehicles. I think I'm, I'm very excited. I, I just wanted to ask one question about the brine. The damage it causes on the streets, if any, um, comparable to salt. Um, and just want to have that conversation because what we don't like and what we hear, I had one council member tell me that they didn't think there was enough salt on the roads. Then there was another day that he said that there was too much salt on the road. Um, so I just want to make sure that people understand you can't have it both ways. Uh, you know, we, we can't predict the weather exactly how, we, how it's going to come down. What is this alternative, this brine, what does what does that? It, it's really almost to? like a salt water. So it's similar. But the, the idea is that when you're putting dry rock salt on the street uh, and there isn't any water or liquid precipitation or snow happening, it tends to get pushed by traffic to the sides. Um, so the idea here is that when you put it down in a liquid form, it'll stick okay. uh, and stay where it's supposed to to make sure that we are suppressing accumulations. But this will be the first time the city's ever done it in widespread application. Okay, I'm excited to, to hear that. Um, so I want to just go on and allow for Councilmember Danny Drum to ask some questions related to intro to 28. Um, he's going to be followed by Councilmember Constantinides and then Councilmember Cohen. Thank you very much, Chair, and uh, good to see you, Commissioner. Um, I'm just curious to know why you are contradicting the mayor and uh, telling people to go out when the mayor has told people to stay in. So, I mean, I, I don't think that I'm contradicting the mayor. Of course I think you are. The, the, we, I absolutely if you're telling people to go out and clean their streets when the mayor has publicly stated on television that they should stay in, elderly people should stay in, and you're telling them they have to go out and clean their streets, you are contradicting the mayor. So I think that it's very important to have a city that is clean, and I think and that- And you prefer cleanliness over safety. I that's think what that you stated. I, I, I don't- That's I don't what you stated in your statement. I think that you're misconstruing what I am no, saying. No, I'm not. I, I have it right here. I could read it again for you. So what I am saying is that this is a long-held practice that you, people are required, property owners are required to take care of their property. And so- if it's someone who feels that it is unsafe, they certainly like So to you're saying if it's an 86-year-old woman who lives alone, the mayor has gone on TV and has said 
that elderly people should stay in their homes, that they should disobey what the mayor has said and go out and sweep their sidewalk. So is that I, what you're saying? I am saying that it is that's the responsibility is what you're of the saying. property owner to have the sidewalk swept. No, that's what that you're saying, That is what I'm saying. I am saying that's it's the responsibility of the homeowner to have the sidewalk well, I swept. I would disagree with you. Okay? okay? And I think it's cruel. I really do. And I th this has happened to this constituent in my district twice, okay, that you or the people that enforce this law would, would, would do that to somebody. And when we tried to implement or to actually use Local Law 59 as a defense, where you have allowed people to use that as defense, they turned around and they said no, that it's not a good enough defense. Well, I, I believe that that was specifically for the Hurricane Sandy buildings. Right, exactly. Right. So that was so it's okay for that, but it's not okay for this. It's not okay for an elderly person over the age of 65 when the mayor has said, do not go outside, it's too cold to go outside. He's gone on television, he has hosted a, 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 a news briefing, and you're telling folks they have to still go outside and clean their streets. It's they unfair. Have to, they have to make sure that their streets are clean. And how do they do that? So in, in if you- Do they have to go outside to do that? If they do not have, if you could actually get someone else to do it for oh, you- Oh, so you could pay to, someone else to do it, is that what you're saying? If you are a property owner, it is your responsibility to maintain And what about if property? you're a property owner who lives alone and you're 86 years old? So it, the same thing I would tell to my nearly 80 year old mother, you are responsible for maintaining your sidewalk. You would tell your life. mother to go out and not listen to what the mayor has said. I would absolutely, keeping my mother from doing anything that she doesn't want to do would be nearly impossible for me. But Well, it's not a joke. Uh, no, but I, I would say that if she did not feel she could do it, then she mm -hmm. would need to either hire someone or ask someone to assist her. Well, I'm very surprised at your response here. I really am, and I think it's very unfair, and I, and I look forward to passing this legislation. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Council Member. Commissioner, I wanted to ask, how much time after a storm, the last snowfall, I guess, um, are, are homeowners expected to clear the sidewalk? Is it? Is so this it is not for snow. This legislation is for sweeping. And this legislation isn't related to snowfall. It is related to cold weather or to anything that, or hot weather. Um, that is way, the way it is drafted. It's not drafted for shoveling. It's, what I understand it to be is, uh, for local state of emergency, if the mayor was to call one. And right, it but it, you'd still be required to shovel in this local legislation if it was snowfall. You would not be required to sweep for dirt, but you would still be required to shovel. I want to see if we could have more conversations. I think the intent here um, is, is, a, is, a, is an effort to, to be humane about how we think about what our elderly have to go through um, during these emergencies, whether it be snow or not, and that maybe the city has, uh, maybe we could be thoughtful about how we get there, and that this yeah. might not be 100% the way you want it to be, but we should be having a conversation about taking care of the most vulnerable, which is kind of our mission statement for many of us here, whether it's children, whether it's the elderly, we always wanna make sure we're looking out to, to, for them to be okay, especially if they're over 65, they've paid their dues, they've done what they had to to make sure we're in a good place here in the city of New York. Maybe we should be thinking about them. No, absolutely. And I, th I do think about that. The one thing I will tell you is that the people who struggle the most when people don't clear their sidewalk are the elderly and the disabled. They are actually a big part of my pedestrian folks who are concerned about sidewalks. I think we could do both. I think we could figure out a way that we, the streets get, the, the, the sidewalk gets cleaned, um, that we're not, being not, we're not being punitive to, to, to the elderly folks, but we're still being able to figure out a way to keep these sidewalks clear. I think we could, we're smart enough to figure this out where it doesn't need to be one way or another. Um, there's a middle ground here that we could figure, we okay. could think about. Um, can I allow for Council Member Constantinides? Mm -hmm. Oh, there he is, sorry. With the uh, green tie, Captain Planet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chair Reynoso and, and Commissioner, always good to see you. Um, so I have a couple of questions. One about um, downtime. Um, when our trucks are in need of repair, do we have enough mechanics to get our trucks back on the road during this very busy season? I know that there, there we were supposed to hire 14, I believe, and then the city hasn't released the funds yet. Or are we moving in a good direction? We'll be ready to keep all these trucks in good repair during uh, the snow season. I have approval from the oversights to do the full hire up to headcount. 
um, and they should be coming on board before the end of the year. And so we will put people on overtime to make sure if there's any event before that, that we are making sure that the trucks are ready to roll. But um, I feel comfortable that we have a sizable fleet and we'll be able to manage it. And all of the spreading equipment has just come off a of full upgrade. Uh, so I think we're ready to rock and roll. So we do have uh, approval from our oversight to hire the necessary mechanics for the winter season. Great. So that'll be up and running by the end of this year. Yep. Now, a um, you know, lot of machines, a lot of, uh, of apparatus that we that we have. How many in the borough of Queens? I happen to have that number right in <laughs> front of me. So on the salt spreading number for this is so this is our de-icing the big spreaders. That number is two hundred and fifty. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then your plow number is what well, we have more equipment than this, but uh, is another five hundred and forty-two. So that, that is what that is the what the number that I need to get to the routes. I actually have more than that in. You the have more th- in the borough of Queens. In the borough of Queens. So I mean, how how we are on like some of the smaller apparatus as well to be able to get down some of the narrow the streets or the holsters you have. Uh, 58. 58. All right, definitely. I, I look forward to, uh, I'm going to reach out to your office and just kind of, just double check with you. So sure. Go you through with some of these you numbers. Could, you could read through the draft snow plan that details Queens ev- down to the last person in every district. Oh, well, let's Because I, I feel like you'd like to. I, th- I think I will. I mean, I actually, I have, but let's just want to keep going over things. Just want to make sure we're good. Yes, no, you're, you're good. We have lots of equipment in Queens. Good. Uh, I look forward to hopefully not having to using it too much this this season. Um, but I appreciate uh, you being here. Thank you, Councilman Brunoso, for letting me answer some questions. No problem. Thank you, and uh, Councilmember Cohen. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think that we didn't we pass a bill that says that the the equipment has to be on the the availability of the equipment is online someplace too. I, I think. Yeah, yeah it's going to be put on the web. Yeah. We did that, yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, we could read it online. We could read it right here on our phones if we wanted to. Uh, I have a well, question we, we about. We, we wait for the dr- we put the final up on November fifteenth for this snow season because the numbers change a little bit every year. You got everybody got more this year. Excellent. Uh, could you talk a little bit about uh, just because I, I you know when we get requests people you know shockingly nobody you know people call my office no streets been plowed they haven't right. seen any equipment. Could you talk a little bit about uh, you know primary routes secondary routes tertiary so that you know we can tell you know people when the first flake calls and they're. You know, why are there no plows? That like, sure. kind of uh, sense of so. So we've changed our nomenclature a little bit. We have critical routes, uh, sector routes, and holster routes. And the critical routes are your big highways, places with schools. Um, then the sectors are sort of more box-like uh, chunks of uh, routing. And then the holsters are for the small pieces where we have dead ends and can only use that piece of equipment. You can look online. On the Plow NYC map, you can you can toggle between um, what is uh, ha- what your street is designated at, so you know what your street is, and then how much we've completed. Uh, the way that we roll out is that obviously the spreading equipment starts ahead of accumulations, um, and so that will that starts on the critical uh, routes and then rolls into the sectors. Uh, if we have plowable snow, there is a plow for every single route, and therefore um, we should be going by everybody's house. Uh, you know, every two, three hours, they should get a pass um, when we are in plowable snow. But we can't start plowing till we're over two inches. Uh, and also, I know a num- number of us, uh, and I know there's a complicated issue with DOT, but I have a number of, like, private streets also that are, you know, some that are not maintained by the city, some that are partially maintained by the city. What do we do there? So it, those are designated. We don't plow them if they are designated as private streets, uh, and you can see online if that is the case, whether or not yours is something that we think we're responsible or not. Okay, and I appreciate that. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Council Member. I want to ask. Uh, oh, okay, I want to ask uh, questions. Re- electric vehicles. Uh, I thought we were supposed to pilot one last year. I uh, just want to know how that. When and or if, if we actually so did we it. didn't we did not get the electric be- vehicle from Mac yet. Apparently, it is um, not ready for us. They are hoping to have it in the first quarter. Um, we are hoping to get an electric room ahead of that, but be- due to their price tag, we're working on getting some grant funding 
to yeah. bring that into the city. I saw White Plains is, is saying they're going to be the first municipality to have an electric garbage truck. I'm not a fan that White Plains would beat us to it. Um, um, they might they might pilot a garbage truck. It may not be the size of our garbage trucks. <laughs> I see. Okay. Um, but you know, we've been working closely with Mac. It hasn't shipped yet. They've shown it off at a lot of conferences, but they haven't given it to us to play with. And it was supposed to be here in the spring, and it hasn't okay. arrived yet. Um, okay. So then the next thing is just budget related. Uh, it seems like the MMR is saying that we had less snow last year than the year prior, but that it costs more uh, to remove an inch of snow. Uh, from one year to the next. So we have less snow and we're paying more to remove it. I well, just want to, yes, is, is this a political, a political reasoning behind it? Did we make so much noise that you're just throwing resources on top of resources regardless of how much snow is going to fall? So it, when you take a conservative approach mm -hmm. and when you have to treat every storm that is a threat of snow as if you're going to have plowable snow, you use a lot more resources. The other thing that I think happened in this season, particularly through the February, Jan, uh, January, February, March portion of it, is the threat of snow was actually there. I mean, if the if the rain snow line had moved, we would have gotten a lot of snow. Um, the depth of snow and the cost are really not related uh, at all. Okay. Uh, it's really the number of times we have to put people on overtime and drive all the routes. So if it's one inch, 50 times, that's a lot more expensive than if it was 50 inches on one day, even though 50 inches would be historic. The, the MMR doesn't measure it by inch, does it? I think it, it just has the, it just has the dollar value. Okay, all right. Just want to make sure that we're. I don't on remember. The same page. I look at it and then I forget. Okay, uh, can we? But uh, I, it is. It doesn't. It doesn't track to the the depth. I want to allow for Councilmember Margaret Chen has a couple of questions. Thank you, Chair. Commissioner, I just want to um, find out, is that, are there any coordinations with the Business Improvement District? Because I know that in my district, you know, I have quite a few of them, mm -hmm. and the first thing they do is they, they clear the crosswalk, mm -hmm. um, you know, the corner, and make sure that people mm -hmm. will be able to cross the street. So are, do you coordinate with them and provide support to make sure that they do that on a, that so you know, they have the resources to do that and make sure it happens. So we, we meet with them uh, to understand what their plans are, um, and, but they are not like sort of deeply embedded, uh, but we stay in contact with them through the storm because obviously as we transition out of plowing into more quality of life, if they've taken care of the crosswalks in a neighborhood, we don't want to go back and try and redo them or staff for that. We want to make sure we're getting to areas where they might not have bids, uh, but you know we think that as you know it, as it is across the city, everyone needs to pitch in when you're talking about something on the order of three hundred thousand crosswalks in the city of New York. Yeah, because I I get pictures <laughs> from some of them, especially the the Chinatown bid, and they're out there early and they just clear all the crosswalk. Yeah, no, and, it's, and, it's, and it's a great thing. It's a great for thing for the residents, for the seniors, for everyone. And I just want to make sure that they are, you know, coordinating with you, and also if they need resources or support, so that they should be able to access those. Yeah, I mean, they 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 usually have a snow budget of their own of how they use their resources, and then, you know, when we are going moving into the other parts of our operation, then we end up, you know, it's often we often aren't putting resources in bids because they usually do pretty well. We're usually trying to put resources in areas without bids for the hand uh, work that needs to happen. Well, we're, we're glad they're doing their part. Yes, no, they do They do a very nice job. They do a very nice job. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the 15th uh, to get the snow plan to make sure that the council members can review it and make sure we're addressing the issues that are important to them. But, you know, I... I know November was the time we chose in local law to have a report back related to how we're handling snow and what we're going to be doing moving forward. But it seems like uh, we'll have an emergency one right after the next big snowstorm to address a lot of these issues. Uh, but I, um, uh, I look forward to when uh, we don't have an emergency meeting after every single snowstorm, we allow for folks to make an assessment and that we use this time here to really address the concerns that we had in the past and how we're able to, 
to, to modify, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. It's a lot of finger pointing and a lot of grandstanding that happens after an emergency. Uh, so it, we prefer that not be the case and that we do something productive here where we're addressing those details. Uh, but we did address a lot of details mm -hmm. after that, Avery, um, uh, after Avery. And um, it seems like you modified with these five recommendations um, as to how we're going to be doing work. Um, and I also want to encourage that we do um, as best we can to try to address the issue of uh, taking care of our elderly and making sure that we're, we're mindful mm -hmm. of the hardships that they have and whether or not we want to have them incur costs, um, that either through fines or having to pay someone to do something um, in front of their home when maybe there's a better, <coughs> a better idea for it. But outside of that, um, no other council members have questions. Any other council members have questions? Follow up? Yeah, so we're going to allow for council members that address Okay, so, so just um, how many um, violations uh, were issued last year um, during declared emergencies and severe weather conditions? Um, I don't have that data. I can get you that data. Okay. And you'll have to actually help me a little bit because are we talking about any time there was high or low temperatures as well? Yeah, that would be that would okay. be helpful if you could give me that also. Okay. And um, do you know if any of the violations were issued to seniors or we people with disabilities? That, we wouldn't have that information. Okay. It's we're done by we're address? Just, we're just issuing to a property. Uh -huh. To a property address. Okay. Um, all right, that's it. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so thank you. And I guess uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.